we make pie charts only with factor type of variables or categorical data, not with numeric data. To make a pie chart, first we make a small table. So using function called table, and then we can say what data we want to use, dollar sign, which variable we want to use, species. So this will give you a small table like this. So we can store this table in, let's say tab, by typing tab and pointing arrow towards it. So this information that you see as output will go and sit in tab. So you can see this tab now contains this information. So for pie chart, the function we use is pie and tab and hit run. And now your fourth window changes to plots and it shows you this plot. Sometimes when you get the default plot, that may be enough, but many a times we want to customize it. We want to give a nice title because we should not have a plot that has no title. Those things we can do very easily in R. You can put a comma and give a main title. What is main overall title for the plot? Now I have seen many people making a very simple mistake. When they make a plot, they don't think about like giving it a proper name. So this is a pie chart and sometimes people give a title pie chart. That's not very good title to have. You should have a descriptive title that describes your data or what this graph is talking about. Maybe pie chart for species, something like this. But when you run this, you'll see this title comes automatically. Any plot that you make, if you want to put this into a report or you are working on something, you want to copy and paste, it's very easy. There's option here, export. So if you click on export, you have option to save this image. If somebody is writing a research paper and they expect you to have a high quality image, R provides you that option. You can save this as a very high quality image. You can also save this as a PDF. So when you save this as an image, it gives you some other things like where you want to save. You can choose your directory, what format, width, height, whatever you want to choose, whatever name you want to give to the file, just click save and go back to files. You will see that rplot.png is saved there. So that's where any image can be saved. Later on, if you want to download this or whatever you want to do, you can do that. You can select this, hit more and export it to your desktop. Again, bar plot is for categorical data only. We'll use the tab data and use a function called bar plot. So that will give you a bar plot. So this is the default one. It, you can always add title. You can also change colors if you want. If you say col color, simply type green. Everything will be green. You can also do rainbow. And because we want three colors, we can say we just want to use three. So it will pick up three and change the colors. So we cannot use factor variable for making a histogram. So histogram is for numeric variables or continuous variables. And we have four of them. If you use H I S T, so that's the function. And then we can say what exactly we want to plot. Iris. So we have to give a complete address. Iris is the total data. And then we have to tell which variable. So let's say simple length. So it will create a histogram with default settings, which can again be modified as per your liking. Initially, we may not know how do I add something or modify a default graph to something that I want. So whenever there is a question mark in your mind, bring that question mark here and maybe console, put a question mark and then name of the function, H-I-S-T, hit enter and suddenly your fourth window becomes a help window and it will give you everything about histograms because anytime somebody creates a package in R, they have to fulfill a lot of requirements. So that package should have a lot of like documentation and other things. It describes everything here in great detail. For example, COL that we saw is for colors. If you go towards the end, it gives you a lot of examples. So I will use some of these to customize this histogram. And what I will do is earlier, I was just putting a comma and typing uh, new features. But what I will do now is I'll put a comma and hit enter. 
because if I want to include five different features that I want to use to customize, that one line can become too long. We can hit enter and go down and say we want, let's say, color group, and then put another comma at the end, hit enter, main equals, because default title looks a bit odd. It says histogram of iris dollar sign, sepal length. So that's a bit odd. We can say, so that may look slightly better. Histogram is a univariate plot or univariate uh, visualization. You are using only one variable. But there are many occasions where we want to study relation between two variables. And scatter plots are used for studying relation between two variables. So let's do simple length versus simple width. To plot scatter plot, we say plot. And then the first variable, let's say simple dot length versus now I'm going to use a symbol called tilde, which is just below the escape button. So shift, and that will give you this curly tilde symbol. And simple dot width. And then we have to say what data we want to use. So iris. When you run that, you get a scatter plot between simple width and simple length. And then you can use all other things, just like the earlier ones. If you want to change the color, if you want to give a heading or title, all those things are still valid. Suppose I want to plot not sepal length, but log of sepal length. For whatever reason, I want to take a log of sepal length. So I can probably do ln for natural log and put sepal dot length in parenthesis. Okay, that doesn't work. So let me try log. Let's see. Okay, so that works. Sometimes we may have to do a log transformation of a particular variable. And it's not very complicated uh, to do that. You can directly do that while plotting. In this data, we have four numeric variables. You can use a function called pairs, a matrix of scatter plots. So instead of doing scatter plots one by one, you can do them at once. But then within iris, we cannot do a scatter plot for a species variable because that's a factor. So what we can say is, do a square bracket and I can say I don't want the fifth variable. So I can say minus five. Remove fifth column and do a pairs plot and suddenly it will do all possible combinations of all numeric variables. And uh, at once you can see that which variables seem to be related to each other and where the relationship is not that strong. For example, this plot you can see at the top is sepal length and on the right side you have sepal width. This scatter plot is for sepal width versus sepal length. Similarly, this plot is for petal length versus petal width. This one is for sepal width and petal width. One thing which is redundant here is upper triangle is just mirror image of lower triangle. And in a way, actually, it's not that helpful because it's just repeating the same information. If you know that these two variables are related, that will come up here also. If it is not obvious from the plot and looking at this, you can also see the numbers 1 to 7 on the x-axis and on the y-axis 0.5 to 2.5. And if you refer to the data frame on the left, and we are talking about like last two variables. So you can see petal length is the one which takes the values like more than one. This petal length is on the x-axis and petal width is on the y-axis. But there's a better way to plot this, which will be more informative. But for that, I want to introduce you to. So there are a lot of free libraries available in R. And they have been developed by people who have a lot of experience with data statistics. And these people are like experts in the field. And there are many big companies which have created their own libraries, like Google, Facebook, Twitter. There is a library called psych and the way we access that is using library function and then name of the package psych when you run this line you are going to get a error message which says there is no such package called psych but if you give this r story cloud maybe a few seconds you will also notice that there is something which popped up at the top so package psych is required, but not installed. Do you want to install? So if you click install, it will automatically install that package. 
and then you run library, it will work. Otherwise, you can also like go to the fourth window and click packages. So this is the second way you can install. Click install, type the name, so P-S-Y-C-H, and then hit install. But that does not mean that the package is available still. You have to run this line. You have to run this line. And when that line runs without error, that means now the package is available. And we can use a function called pairs dot panels. You can see there is a pairs dot panels function that comes from the psych library. I want to plot iris, but uh, I don't want the last column. You can say minus five. This plot is slightly more informative than the previous one. Whatever plots we have run today, you want to go back to anything, there's an arrow going back here. If you click that, you can go to the previous plots. So it has the lower triangle. That's where you have the scatter plots. Additional thing you get is a histogram, which can give you an idea whether the shape of that variable is normal or it is a skewed distribution. And then you also get for each combination, you get correlation coefficients. So for example, between petal length and petal width, we can visually see there is a very high correlation or relationship between the two variables. And you can see correlation coefficient is 0.96. So plus one means perfect correlation, which never occurs in real life, but you can go closer and closer. And this is quite close actually, 0.96. These correlations, for example, uh, they are very low. I would say negative 0.12, which is very close to zero. But you'll definitely find this plot to be more informative than the previous one.